Hey there, welcome back. Okay, today what we're doing is, I'm, I promised the podcast listeners at the Edelful Gardens podcast, if you haven't listened to it, you should come join us there. It's a lot of fun. I promised the podcast listeners I would do a tutorial on Canva.com. This is the software that I use. It's actually an application that I use to make my plant folios. So a lot of people have gone and grabbed the plant, the plant folios, but it's just a PDF. And unless you have Adobe Acrobat, you can't really uh, use that software to do any changes. So I, first of all, for the YouTube people, I wanted to tell you that this is what a folio is. So this is just a blank piece of paper that I have folded in half. So just a piece of paper from the printer. A folio by definition is basically one of these folded in half. So we are gathering some information on a plant that we don't know. And I always say you can live four lifetimes and never know, probably a hundred lifetimes and never know every plant there is to know. You can learn a lot, but not everything. So invariably there's always gonna be plants that experienced gardeners, new gardeners wanna grow that they know nothing about. So you do the research anyway, right? And if you have to go back and do the research again, you have to go back and do the research again and do the research again. I've just never seen anybody use it for this purpose. So that's why I'm doing this video. Okay, so let's go to canva.com and I will show you what we're talking about, okay? Okay, let's go into canva.com. Okay, I'm already a subscriber. It's a, again, it's a free service. It's an application. You can pay for it. And basically you're gonna get a lot of pictures um, that are not available to you if you're using the free version. But at the time of the re recording, it is free. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, because I'm already signed in, I'm gonna go to, I've already pulled up the blank folio. I'm gonna go grab the example folio. If you go to edifulgardens.com forward slash folio, you're gonna be directed to this page right here. You're gonna get two PDFs. You're gonna get one that is an example. This, in this case, it's oregano. And you're gonna get one that is blank so you can fill out your own. And I highly, highly recommend that you do your own, okay? You're doing your research, right? This is just a place to keep it. I'm gonna show you just real quickly, this is page one, okay? If you go get this, and I don't have to take a lot of time going all over all of these details, page two, growing requirements, it's perennial, evergreen, ground cover, um, and then also a woody shrub, uh, it's a fumigant, a ground cover, an insectiary. Uh, it likes a, you know, what kind of microclimate it likes. Um, the companion plants that it's good for. Okay, that was page two. Page three is culinary and medicinal uses. So this is oregano. This is the blank. So you would just type in whatever plant name that you're wanting to do here. Let's just say it was artichokes. Well, what specific kind of artichoke? So this would say artichoke, and this would be whatever, you know, uh, the scientific name is. Very specific one. What family is it in? The genus, the species, also known as identification tips. You know, how do you know that it's that type? And this really got tricky for me when I was doing the crocus one. <laughs> this, there is a dangerous lookalike in crocus that is also called autumn crocus is purported to be toxic. So I want to make darn sure that it is this one and not this one. So I'll put also known lookalikes in here. Okay. But this is how you do it. You drag that picture over to here. When you go in here, you just basically type in the name. So in this clay case, it was uh, crocus, but it, not just any crocus. It is the crocus, crocus sativus, also known as autumn crocus. This dangerous plant is also known as autumn crocus. So you want to be sure that you have the exact binomial nomenclature there. Okay, let's just undo that. 
Then on this page two, let's go back to oregano. Let's do page two. That is going to be another picture. So this picture is very important. I want to know exactly what this specific variety looks like. Um, this is the bloom. This is what it looks like. This is the leaves. I want to know what that looks like. The picture is very important information and you want to make sure that you're getting it from a very trusted, trusted, reliable, credible source. Is that really what Oregonum vulgare looks like? So again, there's a placeholder. Let's just say I want to go put a picture in wherever you see this little kind of cartoony cloud looking thing here. That's where you can put in a picture. So I like to use, if I can find them, these um, kind of botanical, vintage botanical pictures because it's, it shows me how many um, male parts, reproductive male parts there are, how many female reproductive parts, which was a huge clue in Crocus sativus. The toxic one doesn't have three and three, it had six and one. The USDA zones, the soil type, sun and shade requirements, pH requirements, all that good stuff, all the, all the information you want to know. Um, and a lot of this information is conflicting. When you go to websites and you, it may be four different seed companies that are very reliable, but you're still going to get some conflicting information. Some of them will say zones six through eight. Some of them will say five through nine. Some of them will say, you know, um, zone eight period, the end. So you kind of just have to use your judgment on that, but you got to, you know, in my mind, I kind of do an average. Um, but this is why I say, keep this information. You decide. Um, let me just delete that. I don't want to keep that there. What microclimate, the companions, uh, com good companion plants for it. Uh, this is the culinary and medicinal uses. Okay. So let's go to the culinary and medicinal uses for, uh, this is Oregonum vulgare. This is the example page. I liked this little picture. This was, I was watching a YouTube video for this chef who's in France and I really like him and I wish I remembered his name, um, but I took a picture of my TV screen. That was good information for me because it's saying everything that it pairs well with. I'm always interested in what a spice or a, a vegetable pairs well, well with, it pairs well with feta cheese and with pizza and with dill, with green olives and all of this good information here. So, oh, there it is. <laughs> so there's a picture of my TV screen right there. Um, and then I just pulled that over like that and that's how you do it. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, but let's just say you want this picture. You can use that picture. Um, okay. So this is where I like to put my links and resources. And what you can do is you can just decide in this case, I think I have, um, I don't know. Let's just, let's just call it, let's use Baker Creek, Baker Creek seeds. And let's look at, okay, let's go there. They're rareseeds.com. So in this case, I would go type in rare seeds.com and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this link and then I am going to let me just type in oregano and there's oregano vulgare okay there's lots of different oreganos, but we want this one right here. But if they have some really good information that you want to know, I like to look at these reviews. Then I would just take that link, copy that, go back into my plant folio, and then paste that link here. And now I have a link to rareseeds.com. Let's just say I have a book on... Um, 21st century herbal. I'm going to put whatever, let's just see what I put in here. See, I took that out because I needed more room. And that's why I say, I want you to make this your own. Let's just say I had a, in uh, my, um, the encyclopedia of herbs and 
spices, which I have on my bookshelf. Now let's just say that gave me some really good information that I typed in here, purported medicinal and nutritional qualities. And I want to give myself a reference. Let's just say it was on page 219. Now I don't have to go flip, flip through the whole book and you can move these around if you need to. Uh, it looks like I didn't have them centered. I can make more space between them. I can just kind of drag around these little text boxes. It's really easy to use. Uh, but now I know that all I have to do is go to page 219 to find, now why did I put this in here? <laughs> you know, Wives Tales Mythology and Lore. So let's go back to the other one. This is page four, Wives Tales Mythology and Lore. And then I have some information here about oregano. Again, this is my picture that I did. And this is, um, oregano means happiness. And, you know, if it's found near a grave, it's a sign of happiness. And the bride and groom used to wear it on, as a crown on their heads on their wedding night to ensure happiness. And so I thought it was really interesting that, and that oregano is an anaphrodisiac. I thought that was interesting. And then that is the end of the, that is the end of the folio. Wives Tales Mythology and Lore. So that is four pages. That is how I do my plant folios in Canva.com. It wasn't a real extensive video on how to use Canva. That wasn't the purpose of it. It wasn't a real extensive video on or, uh, oregano, uh, oregano. I've been listening to Monty Don too much. <laughs> I love him. Love the way that the British say oregano. I say it all the time like that. But um, it wasn't meant to be like a lot of information about one plant. It was meant for you to know that you have the ability to record the information. When you find some really good information, a place to keep it. You know, I used to keep this on a spreadsheet for the longest time, but I always found myself wanting to have something like, what is this flower supposed to look like? Uh, what do the seeds look like? A lot of times I want to know what does the seed look like? Because if I order seed from the internet, I've gotten wrong things before. It's like, uh, I know that this is not calendula seed because calendula looks very distinctively. I want to know what the seedling looks like. Maybe those are the pictures that I'm going to start doing in the future. So whenever I see it coming up in the garden, I know this is what it looks like. But the pictures in this case are as important to me as the words in the plant folio. I want to know, is that really the plant that I thought I was planting? Because in some cases, it can be the matter of it being edible or toxic. It can be the difference between being, um, I don't know where I put it in the landscape because I do all edible landscaping. It needs to fit. It needs to look good. It needs to be pretty. Um, an edible landscape. That's what it is. <laughs> anyway, this is how I do my plant folios for my edible landscapes. All right. Uh, if you like it, I guess I was doing some kind of sub subliminal advertising here. Um, if you like it, be sure to hit uh, that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. But if you hit that little bell, it'll alert you when I put up a new video about edible landscaping. Okay, I guess that'll do it for this one. Bye for now.